Hello, Paul, Jeffina, and John Paul. Thank you for uh, joining class. Uh, also, well, uh, welcome to our uh, e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture uh, later on. Uh, last uh, class that was on Monday, we began uh, studying chapter 14 of uh, the Book of Romans. Uh, we read through Romans chapter 14. And uh, we, I just gave a brief introduction to chapter 14. Now we'll continue our study with uh, uh, each verse on chapter 14. Before we do that, uh, we'll just pause for a word of prayer. So can I ask uh, Paul to lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Father Almighty God, we thank you for yet another bright day in our life. I surrender the class to you, I surrender the lecturer to you. It is because of your grace and glory that we exist. Father King of Glory, as we are going to learn, we call upon the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom to prevail upon us. We cover the internet connection with the blood of Jesus that there will be no interruption. We pray and commit this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Paul. Uh, so in Romans chapter 14, uh, Paul is basically talking about how we uh, relate to one another. He's talking about Christian living here. And uh, two points he basically highlights in Romans chapter 14 is the first one is, you know, uh, don't judge another brother or another believer who is expressing their faith little differently from you. And the second thing is don't become a stumbling block, uh, which means, you know, we need to live our lives in such a way that, uh, that our expression of faith uh, shouldn't cause someone else to stumble in their faith or the way that we live or the way that we do things, what we eat, we drink, the places that we go to um, should not become a stumbling block to others uh, in their faith walk with God. Okay, So um, he basically puts uh, 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 it in the context of, um, you know, uh, or he's talking in the context of certain things that uh, are relevant for them. So he's saying, you know, in their context, he's saying, don't judge someone in the certain days they observe, which is certain days that are good, certain days that are bad, and the food that they eat. Okay. And then he's secondly, he says, how. Uh, I express myself in the food I eat or what I should drink uh, should not cause someone else to stumble. So he's basically talking about these two specific areas. They eat, okay? Now, uh, is that is this going to be relevant for our day and age today? What do you think? It's what Paul writing in Romans chapter 14. Do you think it is relevant for us in our day and age today? Yes, no. Can I have some answers? Sorry, somebody said something. Okay. Okay, Jeffina says it's relevant. Okay, I thought I heard Rosalyn. I don't think she's in the class. I though. think Anyways. it's relevant. Okay, it's relevant. How is it relevant? Okay, so even today there can be, you know, issues like this uh, in our uh, among believers about observing certain days, the food. It might not be like a major issue like it was in Paul's time, and that is why he's writing 
but the principle that you know Paul brings out here, you know, uh, in this two specific context that he's writing to the church at Rome, uh, can also apply to other situations, you know, um, uh, or it can, you know, or we need to apply the same truth in. Uh, the situations that we face in uh, uh, today's day or age or in the context that we are living in, okay? So what do you think are some of the areas that we think that people judge us on uh, as believers or some of the areas that we can be a stumbling block to others? What do you think? If you don't want to unmute your mics and speak, you can type in the chat. What do you think some of the challenges are in today's age, the time that we are living in, that people can judge us on? Mm -hmm. I, I have a few points to share, but I don't know if it goes well everywhere, but back in my place, this uh, the way we dress is, is one of the way people judge us. So if you don't wear a sari, if you don't wear a salwar, uh, or if you don't uh, cover our heads, that creates a lot of judgment. So when when I go back to my place, uh, being a Bible college student, the judgment increases more. And uh, I am from a village background. My dad is from a village background. So on our vacations, we go there. In there, the food practices, they still follow. They still believe we should not eat blood, pig, all those things. So. I think it depends upon the culture. So obviously, when I go back to my village, I don't eat much of these things. And when I go back to where I live, I try changing my dress because uh, we don't want uh, be, to be a stumbling block, especially when I go and preach somewhere. And I may follow different things here, but when I go back there, I'll, I'll change a little because ultimately we want the word to reach them. <laughs> yes, so true. Thank you, Jeffina. Anyone else wants to share? I think cultures vary different places. Uh, like, you know, uh, especially for us as women, when we have to go and preach and teach uh, somewhere else, especially if you go on mission trip to North India, uh, you know, we are careful what we wear. Uh, we have to we cover our head when we go up to preach. Uh, at APC, when we go up to preach uh, on stage, we, do, we can wear our shoes or our footwear or whatever. But, you know, when we go to these churches, we have to remove our footwear. So it's good, you know, to do these things so that we are not a stumbling block to uh, anyone. Okay. So let's uh, study Romans chapter 14 so that we can, uh, you know, uh, look at what uh, Paul is basically saying and then apply the same truths in today's uh, context uh, or the time that we are living in. Okay, so can somebody please read Romans chapter 1 verses um, 1 to 13, please? So Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 13. You would like to read that? Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 13. <coughs> Or 1 to 10. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let him not, uh, let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, if we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again that he might be Lord for, uh, of both dead and the living. By, why, 
but why do you judge your brother or why do you show contempt for your brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of christ I uh, will read till 13, Pastor. Yes, please, John. Yes. Thank you. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of God, uh, account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Amen. Thank you, John Paul. So in this uh, first part of uh, his uh, letter or in chapter 14 uh, or this part of the portion of the letter that he is writing, you know, Paul is concerned about people who are weak in the faith. So basically someone who is new to the faith or basically someone who's, you know, uh, been there a couple of months and is growing. So what Paul is saying is, you know, welcome them. And when you welcome them, uh, receive them. But uh, when you receive them, you know, don't go about arguing or disputing with them about which days to observe, what food they're eating, how they're eating, why they're eating, you know, um, and all of these things. So he's saying, you know, uh, be mindful of these people who are uh, new in the faith, who have come newly, basically Gentiles who are coming uh, into the church. And it's the Jews who are, uh, you know, um, talking about all of these customs, rituals, Old Testament laws and rituals and days and things that they are following, continuing to follow, uh, even though they have accepted uh, Jesus Christ. So he says, uh, you know, um, uh, if, when they do some things in a certain way, it's their preference. And if it's their preference, don't look down on them because of what, how they are dressing, how they are living, what days they observe as more uh, sacred and then other days, what kind of food they're eating and all of those things. It's their preference. And in verse uh, three, he says, you know, um, uh, whatever they you know uh, eat or uh, drink or whatever who are we to judge them you know because god has received them which means god receives all of us uh, equally and so he says no don't judge uh, anyone because whatever they do it's between god and them so whatever you are doing as jews it's between you and god uh, and whatever they are doing uh, the other new believers in the faith basically referring to gentiles is saying you know it's between them and god it's god who judges okay you are no one to uh, uh, judge so if some day some people have some days as preference it's between them and God. You know, for some people, all the days are same. Some people, uh, some days are more sacred than other days. And, you know, if they are convinced about some things for themselves, uh, you know, let them, it's their preference, it's their choice. Let them do what they're doing because whatever they're doing is between them and God. And God receives all of us and He receives all of us um, equally. Okay. So he's saying, you know, uh, let them do, don't dispute over those things. So in, in today's world, you know, or in the, the context of our church today, it could be, you know, when, when new believers come uh, to our church, it's about, uh, you know, uh, whether they should wear certain kinds of clothes, you know, whether they should wear certain kind of jewelry, uh, whether women should be allowed to preach and teach, whether women should be allowed to wear, wear uh, you know, come with braided hair and jewelry, you know, and all of those things, you know, uh, whether going to the movies is right, uh, you know, or um, whether coming to the church in jeans or shorts is right or not right, or just shorts and t-shirt is okay to come, you know, uh, to church or whether women should cover their heads. Uh, what else? You know, baptism, whether it's sprinkling baptism or immersion baptism, uh, you know, whether they're able to speak in tongues or not, you know, the gifts of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit. So, you know, if we just... Uh, uh, 
push all of these things on these new believers, they would not want to um, uh, come to church. So we need to be very, very careful, even with children. You know, realize that ministering to children, uh, you know, some of these things can be so, we need to be so sensitive uh, to children. I remember before I took over children's church, you know, um, uh, one of the uh, teachers was teaching me, told me that, you know, we were teaching about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so she was saying how she brought her, uh, uh, her uh, nephews to church and they are from a very traditional background. And that Sunday it was uh, about uh, the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit baptism. And she said the way things uh, were done, uh, you know, uh, really uh, kind of put off these children and really scared them that they did not, they said they would not come and attend this children's church again. So, you know, um, that was a good uh, hearing from this person because after that, you know, I've been so mindful whenever we do, uh, whether we, whenever we teach about the Holy Spirit or have Holy Spirit baptism in children's church or uh, do anything that is, uh, um, uh, uh, new some programs and thing always educate the children tell them what we're doing uh, what is the intention what is the learning uh, why we're doing what we're doing uh, because if not when we don't do that children are totally lost and they can you know totally get put off and they can even not want to come to children's church or even church and do nothing with uh, or have to do anything with uh, God so you know we need to be very careful and sensitive to uh, even how we go about doing this even in adult church even when we do holy spirit baptism or even when we're talking about uh, you know, water baptism, you know, uh, specifically at APC, we have a teaching, you know, uh, we teach about water baptism before people are water baptized, just about 20 minutes we take, we take them through, walk them through that uh, publication, water baptism. And even before people go through uh, Holy Spirit baptism, we uh, realize they come with different mindsets, thoughts and views about how Holy Spirit baptism is, what it is, and so how important it is for us to teach them and give them the freedom, you know, uh, where they want to accept and move and be prayed for and be led and, and all of those things. So, you know, uh, all of these things are not to be argued about, okay, all of these things, um, we should be sensitive. The doubtful things here, what Paul is talking about is what you eat and the days you observe. Okay, so in essence, what Paul is saying is in uh, a, 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 is uh, he's saying you know don't argue okay about these doubtful things. And verse three he says, let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let him who does not eat judge him who eats for God has received him. So the essence of what he's saying is, you know, don't despise, don't judge, uh, you know, because God has received them. God has accepted them and all of them are equal uh, before God. Okay. And verse five, he says, you know, let each be fully convinced in his own mind so you be convinced in your own mind what you want to do how you want to dress how you want to live you know what days you want to observe what kind of food you want to eat whether you want to eat meat or vegetable what days are more sacred uh, than the other days you know um, so there is no hard and fast rule in the new testament about for believers on such things okay so it says you have to make up your mind and once you make up your mind he says there are two things you need to do what do you think are the two things you need to do what do you think paul is saying are the two things to do i already mentioned it anyone would like to say what are the two things we need to do once we are convinced in our mind what we should be doing what we shouldn't be doing what are the two things that we need to do Any, any answers? First one is do not judge. Okay. And the second one is don't be a stumbling block to others. Okay. Do not judge someone, uh, you know, if they don't follow what you are doing. Okay. Uh, that's what he says in verse 10. Can somebody read verse 10 again, please? Verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? 
or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. So it says, why are you judging or showing contempt? You know, contempt means why are you looking down? As though you are more spiritual than them, as though you are more righteous uh, than them because of certain kind of food you eat, the way you dress, the way you worship God, uh, you know, the way you do things. Uh, so, you know, why do you show, uh, why do you judge and why, why do you show contempt? Because ultimately, you know, whatever we do, we are doing it for God, okay? And God is the one who would judge us. Okay, and uh, and each one is uh, we would we, each one is going to give an account of the things, the deeds, the way that we've lived our lives, our attitudes, our motives. We are going to uh, give an account to God ourselves. Okay, so he says, you know, don't judge and don't show contempt. Now, um, in in the traditional context, you know, um, there are certain kinds of clothes that we need to wear too. Uh, church, you know, uh, in some churches I've observed it's okay for us to go, which in in shorts and uh, you know in jeans. Uh, nobody would, uh, you know, uh, really kind of think that you are worldly or you know <laughs> you uh, you've lost your salvation kind of thing. But uh, some of the churches that we go to, we can't think of going in in jeans or in shorts. You know, I mean that's. That's a no thing, okay? Um, so you know, uh, 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 we think if we, if we, they go, we, if we go like that, we think that you know the people will think that we have backslidden or we've gone away from God. Um, so it's it. We need to be very conscious of you know uh, the context where we are and what we are uh, doing. Uh, even if we see people dressed like that, you know, don't judge them, and you know also. Um, and don't show contempt and uh, important that because uh, I come from a certain church where they it's okay for for us to go in jeans and t-shirt or you know go in shorts and worship God nobody will judge you but going to another place where this is an, a big no you know I can't uh, expect people to understand me and you know to know which church I come from and all of those things because they're going to think that the church I come from is not a spiritual church it's a worldly church you know uh, where the word of God is not taught and I'm giving them a wrong impression so you know important for us uh, to adhere to culture and to the context we are in uh, so that we are not a stumbling block to others okay um, don't judge uh, let each one be persuaded in their own mind, which means each one, whatever they're doing, is they're doing it as unto the Lord. And each one of us are going to give an account of what we're doing to God. So this should be our whole perspective. Okay, Our whole perspective is don't judge uh, because God is a judge and ultimately we are going to give an account to him. And in verse 13, he says, you know, uh, don't be a stumbling block to others. How you express your faith should not become a stumbling block to uh, others. And then he goes on to talk about how we need to be convinced about what we are doing, you know, um, uh, in, in our own selves. And when we are convinced about certain things, we need to also be mindful uh, that, you know, uh, when we do things in the open, uh, if another brother looks at us, you know, uh, is going to be uh, grieved or heartbroken or they are going to lose their faith or they're going to walk away from God or it's going to be a hindrance for them, you know, they don't do it. If you go back home and you want to eat certain kind of food and meat and all of those things, you can do it, but you know, just because it's going to be a stumbling block uh, to someone else, I will not do it. For example, you know, uh, if I go to certain churches where women have to cover their head, then you know, I do that. Uh, but if I come to my church and it's that's not a requisite, I don't, I don't cover my head. I can pray like that. I can preach without covering my head. Or when I go home back home after I preach in this church where I covered my head and I go and pray or read the Bible, I don't have to cover my head and I don't have to, you know, pray because uh, uh, cover my head and pray or read the word. I know God is going to listen to me irrespective of that. But that is what I'm convinced about that, hey, I don't have to cover my head. But when I am 
in a certain situation that requires of me, I do that so that I'm not a stumbling um, a, a block. As it is uh, for people in the north part of our country and certain parts in South India where they find it difficult for a woman, uh, first of all, in a place of a, as, a, as a pastor, as a preacher, to accept us, how much more we need to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, hey, whatever I'm doing, the way I dress, the way I conduct my life, um, uh, people are watching me and I need to be very careful so that, you know, uh, the truth that I want to share with them, the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart, uh, uh, you know, does not become a stumbling block uh, for them or a mental block for them to uh, receive. And, uh, you know, they are able to receive it and they are able to um, uh, you know, uh, be willing for the move of God to work in their lives, and the Holy Spirit to work and to receive what the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, is um, you know uh, releasing, even as I minister. Okay, so that is what he is mentioning in verses one to uh, verse thirteen. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, verses fourteen till verse twenty three. So, can somebody read uh, Romans fourteen verses fourteen to twenty three, please? Before anyone reads, is there any question on verses 1 to 14? Anything you all want to make a comment on? Anything that you all want to say? Okay, if there's no comments, if there's nothing you all want to ask, there's no question. Uh, can somebody please read verses 14 to verse 23, please? Verse I know 14. that. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. I know and I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy, do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats. Because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So in these verses, Paul is uh, you know, talking specifically about eating meat and drinking wine. So in essence, what Paul is saying is when you are in Christ, you are free to eat what you want. Okay. So if you just have to paraphrase uh, what Paul is saying, you know, he's saying, hey, I want to be careful that I don't grieve my brother because of food. If what I am doing is an offense, uh, this is he's talking about in verse 20, if what I'm doing is an offense to another, or what I'm doing is an offense to a weaker brother, somebody who's weak in their faith, which means someone who does not understand the freedom we have in Christ to eat certain food, then I will be careful. Okay, because I don't want to grieve my brother. So this is just paraphrasing what Paul is um, saying. So he's saying, you know, we have the freedom. You know, in Christ, we are free to eat what we want. Okay, but, you know, uh, 
I would Paul saying, I'd be careful. I don't want to grieve my brother. Okay, I don't want to become an offense to uh, a weaker brother, someone who's weak in their faith, uh, someone who's not able to understand this freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, that we can eat certain kind of food, then I will be careful and I will not grieve my brother. Okay, she says, what is the offense? Uh, the weaker brother does not understand the freedom that we have in Christ. Okay, for him, uh, basically, this is not right. This shouldn't be happening. Okay, uh, this is what he thinks. But for me, or for Paul, he's saying, no, we have this freedom to eat whatever we want. So we enjoy that freedom. But for weaker brother, this is not right. So in front of him, I would not uh, do it. Okay, so if what I'm doing is going to weaken his faith in Christ, then he says, Paul says, I won't eat or drink that so that I won't become a stumbling block to his faith. Verse, um, verse 21, where he says, it's good neither to eat meat or drink wine or do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. And, you know, it's it's okay. Paul saying, I don't, even if I don't eat certain kind of food in front of, you know, uh, my other brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, it's okay because I don't want to destroy the work of God for the sake of food. Okay. Um, and he says, all things indeed are pure. Okay. Which means we are allowed to eat anything and everything, but it's evil for a man who eats without offense. Okay. Offense means, like I said, you know, the weaker brother does not understand his freedom in Christ. For him, this is not right. It should not be um, happening. Okay. So Paul says, I have freedom in Christ and my freedom in Christ is, you know, uh, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking or the clothes you wear or the certain kind of rituals or the certain days you observe. Um, festivals that you do, but the kingdom of God is all about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, which is the bigger and the more important uh, things, okay? So he says, I have the freedom, but if I exercise my freedom, it's going to cause a new believer to be either offended or be weakened in the faith in Christ, then I won't do it in that context, okay? Uh, and also look at what he says in um, in in verse um, uh, 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Okay. So the whole uh, uh, thought or the whole idea about why God is even asking us to preach and teach or to flow in the gifts of the Spirit uh, in the church, in the context of the church, is for edification. Okay, we also saw this in the in the the fivefold ministry offices. It is for the edification of the body of Christ. Okay, so everything that we do, what we preach, how we live our lives, you know, what we say, uh, even when we are serving people, uh, flowing in the in the anointing, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, it should all be for the edification of the body of Christ. That the Church of God or the believers, the saints can be edified, can be built, can be strengthened, equipped in their faith, in their spiritual walk, in their understanding about who um, God is. And also verse 19, another very important thing that he says is, you know, let's pursue all of these things. Pursue means what? What do you think is pursue? Let's run behind, you know, keep at it, persevere, endure with these things important things, these truths and how we live, um, how we relate, how we fellowship with another. He's saying in all of these things, make sure that, you know, you have peace. Peace is very, very important. Uh, what is the outcome of peace? What is the outcome of peace when you have peace with people, peace in the body of Christ? What is the outcome? Edification, okay. There's unity and oneness right? Only when there's unity and oneness, there is peace. So important for us to 
have peace. So if you look at, uh, you know, the Old Testament, the various scripture passages, they talk about pursue peace. As long as it's possible with you, keep the, you know, maintain peace, pursue peace. So all we need to do is pursue peace. Why? Because for God, you know, it's not about... Um, uh, uh, not just about, you know, how well we preach, how many ministries we build, how many books we wrote, and how many sermons we preach. It's about doing His will and uh, also about, you know, maintaining that peace, that unity and oneness. And that is what even Jesus in His high priestly prayer in John chapter 17 says, Father, let them be one as we are one. Okay, so for God, that is unity is so important. This, there is that perfect unity in that Trinity, even though the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, you know, with distinct roles and responsibilities, but yet just so one. And, uh, you know, that is what they desire of us. So even as we are in the process of, you know, building God's kingdom, as kingdom builders, we are part of... Um, God's kingdom, it's important for us to pursue peace in any and everything, even though sometimes it's giving up our own, uh, you know, our rights sometimes, uh, you know, giving up our own stance, you know, whatever it is, just saying, God, I'm doing it so that, you know, I want uh, to see your peace um, uh, and maintain peace and unity and oneness in the fellowship, in the body of uh, Christ and that is what God is looking for and he is his heart is uh, pleased with okay and so in verses 22 and 23 he's saying you know uh, if you are happy with what you are eating and drinking how you're living your life what you wear what days you observe and all of those things it's good continue just doing that it's between you and God if you don't feel condemned it's okay but if you feel condemned then you know you're not eating from faith and whatever you do which is not based on faith is sin. So, you know, when you condemn yourselves and you feel condemned, you know that, you know, you are, you're feeling guilty about something wrong that you are doing. Then you are basically knowing that you're doing something that is not according to the faith, that you're sinning. So he says, uh, you know, be happy with what you have decided for yourself. And if it is uh, right in God's sight, you know, go ahead and do it and don't condemn yourselves. Uh, 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 in what you have decided to do because between you and, and God but if you condemn yourself and you think you're condemning yourself then be careful because that is not from faith and that is sin Okay, so very simple chapter just basically two things about not judging others um, and also not being a stumbling block which are two uh, important things which we kind of two important aspects we kind of overlook we miss out uh, you know, uh, and uh, we can be so uh, judgmental and critical about various people and we can, because of that, we have destroyed people's lives, their character, their ministry because and their whole calling because of the things that we have spoken, because of our judgmental attitudes and our criticisms. And also sometimes we have been, our lives have been a stumbling block too others so important that we check ourselves we ask the grace of god in these areas pray about these areas we're doing things that are a stumbling block to others we need to set our lives right ask the holy spirit to lay his finger on those areas and if we are judging others you know be mindful uh you know be sensitive and ask the holy spirit to help us in this uh, area as well any questions and thoughts before we move to chapter 15? We just have two more chapters for uh, the book of Romans. Any questions? No questions. Okay, no questions, then we'll move on to chapter 15. In chapter 15, uh, the first half of Romans chapter 15, Paul is teaching us how uh, he continues the same uh, topic or the same theme of how to bear with those who are weak. And then, uh, you know, he shares about his ministry and plans as he begins to, uh, uh, you know, uh, wrap up his letter and what he's writing to the church at Rome. Okay, so we'll read uh, Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 13. Can uh, one of you read? 
uh, six verses and someone else can read seven verses, please. So one of you can read Romans chapter 1 to 16 and someone else can read from 7 to 13. Romans chapter 15 verses 1 to 6, bearing others' burdens. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Roslyn. Uh, can someone else read from verses 7 to 13? I think your doggy also likes to read. <laughs> Is that your doggy, Roslyn? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry about he, that. No, 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 no. So sweet to hear his voice. Yeah, I think he is also you, very excited to read. <laughs> yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Verses uh, 6 to 13, someone else can read? Or oh, 7 to 13, sorry. <clears throat> Should I read, ma'am? Yes, continue, Rosalind. <clears throat> Verse 7. Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, for this reason, I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, Lord him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shall I continue? Miss, you're muted. Should I continue? Sorry, you read till 13, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's enough. Thank you, Rosalind. Amen. So, uh, in Romans chapter 15, you know, Paul continues to remind us of how to uh, basically be thoughtful, sensitive, mindful, and respective towards other believers, okay? So, he's talking about that in the first um, few verses, 15 verses in this uh, chapter. And he says to those who are um, strong in the faith, uh, what does he say? What does he say to those who are strong in the faith? Verse 1. They need to bear with scruples of the weak and not to please themselves. And what does he say in verse 2? He says, we need to please uh, you know our neighbor for his good uh, leading to you know his edification okay so here basically paul is saying that you know those who are strong in their faith they need to bear with the weaknesses of the weak so the weak here are basically those who are new in their faith or also those who have been in the faith and, you know, they are still growing in their faith. He says, you ought to bear in verse 1, which means uh, don't do things 
just to please your faith, but also do things to build up those who are weak in their faith. So two things, you know, what are the things that we ought to do is just not do things to please our faith, but also do things to build up those who are weak in their faith. And the idea here isn't really bearing wit, because he says, you know, bearing wit. The idea is not really bearing wit, but it's but it's more bearing up. You know, it's bearing up with a weaker brother. Bearing up means basically supporting him. You know, supporting him with your uh, you know, with your superior strength, with your superior faith, with your um, uh, spiritual maturity, your growth, your walk with God, which is strong, you know, uh, just supporting them, bearing up, supporting uh, them. So this is what we need to keep in mind when we relate to others, that we bear with people who are new in their faith, growing in their faith, and gently and lovingly, you know, show them from the word what they need to do and how they need to live, how they pray, and how God wants us to live our lives, okay? Yes, they might be doing things in a certain way, but, you know, uh, gently and lovingly, uh, you know, uh, because we learned that the goodness of God leads to repentance. So when we teach and uh, at more, uh, teach and tell them we need to not do it in a judgmental, condemning way, on a way that we're preaching down on them, but we do that in a way that, you know, uh, uh, with love, with gentleness, with uh, patience. We also learned that, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, God is patient uh, and long suffering, not wanting anyone to perish. Okay, um, uh, and he's, uh, we, we, we talked about that, we read this in, in Romans. So here, you know, he's saying that, you know, um, we need to uh, be supportive, we need to bear and gently and loving, you know, because the goodness of God leads to repentance. So, you know, when we admonish them, teach them in a loving, gentle way, you know, it's the goodness of God that will lead them to change. So we need to gently and lovingly show them from word God, God's word what they need to do, how they need to live their life, how to pray, how God wants us to live our lives. Okay. And verse 2, he says, you know, let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. Please, the Greek word please here means to be agreeable. Okay. And the Greek word for edification means, we all know, is to be built up uh, as in an architecture or a building up of a structure, okay? So uh, verse 2 is, uh, uh, is sounds very simple, but it's not very easy, right? That each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to do things that pleases our, our neighbor, especially when we are not getting along with them. They are irritating us. We can't, uh, you know, go along with them. But here it says, you know, uh, it's challenging uh, uh, to simply put our neighbor first. Okay. But, you know, Paul uh, wrote uh, about this in, in his letters. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, 3 and 4, he says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Okay, so let's not do anything out of selfish ambition, uh, you know, esteem others better than ourselves. And each of us look not only for our own interests, but also for the interests of um, others. Okay, it's difficult, but Paul is saying we can do this. Remember going back to what he talks about in Romans chapter 8, that, you know, we can live a life uh, uh, away from sin, you know, uh, uh, not giving into the deeds of the flesh when we live according to the uh, spirit, when we gratify the things of the uh, spirit. Okay, he says when we do this, it leads to edification, which means, you know, um, uh, all too often we as Christians find it easy to, you know, tear each other down, bring each other down, uh, you know, um, instead of building others up, you know, and this is uh, the basically how Satan operates, okay, this is his strategy. 
uh, this is something that he does. His strategy is to tear down, pull us. Uh, his, his strategy is to steal, kill, and uh, destroy. So, you know, uh, we are called as kingdom builders. We are called to build. So, you know, we need to be very careful on how we build people with our words, with our lifestyle, things that we say, things that we do, how we re retaliate, how we, our attitudes and in our um, motives. Okay. I'll stop here. I won't go into verse 3. Uh, we will continue verse 3 from Monday. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? Anything that you want, any comments you want to say? Okay. There is uh, no questions, no doubts. We'll end class here. Okay. Thank you all for uh, joining class. Have a good, refreshing weekend. Have a good, uh, blessed weekend. And I'll see you all on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind.